out with the old stamp organization, and I use that term loosely, and in with the new stamp organization. Hi everybody, Creative Katie, Karen Birchall here. Welcome to my art studio and to my YouTube channel. Today I'm really excited to bring you a stamping organization video. In a recent video entitled My Top 10 Stamps, I talked about how I had reorganized my stamps and that has been done and I've used this system for a little bit and I absolutely love it. So I'm going to flip the camera down and share with you the way that I just found to store my cling stamps and some of my texture stamps so that they are super easily accessible and I'm hoping that I'm going to get more use out of them because they are just so easy to access. So in 2017 I made a video where I showed how I stored all my clear cling stamps in these CD cases. And for three years, this has served me really well. They were stored, they were off to the side, they were labeled clear. And for the most part, I wasn't even looking to replace this system. Now, cautionary about this, people had commented that in some climates, I think warmer climates, some of the stamps started to deteriorate in the cases. So I want to caution you, if you go decide to do this, if you're in a warm climate, you may want to change. I have not had any issues with that happening with the stamps. In my art, I've evolved a little bit and I find that I'm using a lot of texture or background stamps like you see here. And a lot of these I featured in my top 10 stamp video. That I, re that I released in 2020 and you can click on the i card to go to that video if you want to check that out. But these are stamps that I have right close at hand at all times and I grab them and I'm usually stamping in acrylic paint and I'm stamping on my backgrounds and I wanted these close to me. So much so they ended up at the top of my Ikea cart just kind of thrown in there in a in a pile. Sometimes they were piled, they were a little bit more organized, but overall that's how this was. One day I came across, as we tend to search Amazon, I was looking for large plastic envelopes for another organization tool in my craft room. And I wanted the larger size. And this is 12, this is 13 inches by nine and a quarter inches long. And what I really liked about this is that it comes with a pocket here that you can put a label in. Now, the ones with the labels I noticed came with some smaller ones as well. The A5 size, which measures nine and three quarters by six and a half. And so the best deal for my money, I could get 18 of the large ones and 18 of the small ones for, it was a 20, some odd dollars Canadian. And I thought, you know what? That's comparable to buying these envelopes at the Dollar Tree or at the Dollar Store. And I just was at a point where I wanted in my storage system, I wanted all the envelopes the same and I love the idea of labeling the pockets. So I ordered this set with the two sizes. And I thought, okay, I know what I'm doing with the larger size, which by the way, has yet to be done. What can I do with the smaller size? And I had a 
couple ideas and then when I was making the stamp top 10 stamp video it dawned on me that I could put them in these envelopes that they fit perfectly and the width of these envelopes they say they fit 20 sheets now this isn't sticking on here and I'm just going to use some double-sided tape to be able to stick those on so that just holds and keeps on the envelope. Now, when they come on a sheet like this, so like a lot of the Stampers Anonymous, Anonymous ones or delusional stamps in different companies, I did have to cut a little bit off in order to make it fit. So then I just slide that in to the pouch and it closes. And it works perfectly with the red rubber stamps that thickness it holds it in place so that's what I did with a lot of my stamps and then I got on the computer and labeled them and this is just I know that they will go back into place just like that so again, here's the Stampers Anonymous one, and I'm just going to stick them on the tray just to hold them in place. And slide it into the place. My script stamps. I, these are ones that I've taken off the block, so I'm just sliding them in there. Again, they are labeled, and I've combined, this is from another set, but it's script. So when I grab this package, I have all my script stamps. Just like in this one, I have swirl stamps. So I've got my Fabulous Flourish, I've got this one that I found, I got um, at a thrift store, some other swirls, some other kits that I took, as well as this. So all my swirls are in one place. And I can put multitudes different from different sets in there. They are labeled. So I can easily find them. So it's so easy because I simply grab out, I can flip, look for this particular one, I can see them. They generally stay in shape, in place on there. What I've also done is I've combined this one, we have the Graphic 45 Hampton Arts, The Secret Garden, as well as other stamps that I had from other makers, and I don't even know, that are vintage feel. So I can grab that whole envelope if I'm doing vintage background papers or tissue papers or what have you. So as I said, if they are the red rubber, the one that single thickness seems to work. You can put double thickness in. It will hold if you need it to double up. But for right now, I didn't need to do that. So I've kept it to one because I don't I don't want to, I don't want to damage these. I don't want them to fall apart too terribly easy easily. Now when it came to my cling stamps, I 
put a sheet of paper in between, in this case it's red paper, so on the one side I have hearts, on the other side I have there's love, cherish, and some Victorian, it's all kind of a Victorian feel to it. So, and that thickness holds out, and with the dividing paper I can flip it to both sides, and then on the label I'm simply going to put hearts, And then the name of these, if I if I know the name, I have some of my sentiment stamps. Same thing. On the one side, I have this is a hot off the press one. This is a Tim Holtz sentiment stamp, and I can easily look at both sides and I can see what's in here and be able to find and hopefully use more. I'm hoping that by having my cling stamps that are really easily accessible and viewable that I'm going to use them more. I also have my alphabet stamps that I've started to use a little bit more. And this, I've got a couple sets in here. So I can just pull out, I've got three or four envelopes of alphabet stamps and okay I'm going to want that one or I want numbers. I also put in these small these are texture plates from Carabelle Studios. Um, they're five and a half by almost four inches. They fit really nicely in here as well. I fell in love with this idea and I worked with it for a little bit and I loved it. It worked so easy. I could grab my texture stamps out, put them on my desk. They're easy to take on a create date. I can just say, okay, I want this one, this one, this one. Everything is together. They are easy to go back into the packages and then I store them in a file fashion like this at the top of my IKEA cart. So this is within reach. I just reach behind me. All of my stamps can now fit there, my texture stamps and my cling stamps. I do have some that are on wooden blocks there underneath, lower down. So what I'm going to do is I will put the link to the package that I got that has the two sizes, but I did go back and I did find a package of it where you could just buy the A5 size, just this smaller size. I have tons of more ideas for this size, so I have now ordered more of them. So if you don't have an IKEA chart, I have these baskets that I purchased at the Dollar Tree, buck twenty-five, and they're how deep? These ones are about three and a quarter inches deep. They fit perfectly. In here so I can have these would be all my texture ones if I wanted then I have my focal image ones could be in another basket another bin that's similar so this basket is 11 and a half by 8 wide and it fits these perfectly and you can just see you can just easily flip through and organize your stamps like that. So here you are looking at my IKEA cart with all my stamping tools on the one cart and I love 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 that. I don't know that that's ever ever happened. I love these carts. They now have them a very similar one um, in construction, more heavyweight than the Michaels one at Canadian Tire in Canada. Um, 
at a decent price. So just FYI, if you're looking for a cart that is similar. So at the top, we have my A5 packages that have a lot of my texture stamps. So I've got them organized. I've got texture stamps in the front. Then I have my focal image stamps, my crazy cats, my birds. Then I have a series of my flower stamps, clear stamps, as well as the red rubber ones, flower so I have a lot of the flowers, I tend to use them. I've got my butterflies here, I tend to use those. And then I have all my letter stamps, which I am starting to use more in my art. So they have been moved up to a place where I can access them. Then I have a couple of stamping up sets that I, was, I got off the buy and sell. I may end up taking these off the blocks, but for right now they're just stored in those cases. Off to the side, again, I have some wooden stamps that are in wooden blocks. Again, most of these I've been gifted. I've got at dollar store or at the thrift store or, you know, the cheapies, you know, buck 52 buck bin from Michael's. Now down below, I have my, whoops, so sorry. Down below, I have my foam stamps. These are from, some of these are from Studio Lights. One of them, this one is from Joggles, but the rest are Studio Light ones. And my mark making tools, my embroidery mesh, my drywall tape, my... shelf liners that I use for mark making. So that's kind of nice, close, and handy. I've got my inks, my archival, and my Stavesan inks, and my acrylic blocks right here. These are my homemade stamps. These are ones that I've carved. These are ones that I've made out of fun, fun foam. And you can see those. And so they're close at hand. Down below, I have some more mark making ones, as well as room for more of these envelopes. These are my sentiment ones. And I'm just going to keep them here for now, but they don't need to be close at hand because I'm not using them as much, but I do want to have them being used. Then I have in this Rubbermaid tote, I have my alphabet stamps. These I all purchased from Michael's. And I've got different sizes of stamps. I've got the itty bitty ones and I organize them. I put an elastic around them. I put the alphabet or the vowels in one grouping and then I do them in alphabetical order. So this is B all the way to K. And then it's just easier to find them to build the letters that I need. So I've got three sizes of these blocks and that's something again I've had I haven't used a lot but I'm just starting to want to use it a little bit more so that's kind of nice that it's right there <laughs> down below I just have assorted wooden blocks more focal image there's sentiment ones here and down below I have again some homemade stamps, either carved or ones that I've made from fun foam. So that can go in there. So this sits right here and all, it's just a quick, this is where I create and this is where all my stamping stuff is. 